the third day of national mourning here in France. The country is still recovering from the news of the terror raids across the country. I'm joined now by France 24 journalist Clovis Casali. Um, Clovis, thank you for joining me this morning. You were caught up in Friday night's attacks, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, just tell us what's happening this morning. There's a manhunt underway. They haven't tracked down everybody who was uh, involved. Absolutely. There's an eighth uh, man who uh, French police are looking for. Presumably, he's in Belgium now. His name is Abdeslam. His brother is the man who blew himself up just around the corner at the Café Voltaire. Um, what we do know, it seems that the French police uh, stopped his car as he was crossing into Belgium a Saturday morning. This man was not in the uh, terrorist listings, if uh, you will, of the French police. So they let him pass. They can't arrest everyone um, because they didn't know who this person was. And now, obviously, Belgian police, French police uh, are actively looking for him um, and in this man hut. There's also uh, his picture out in the French media. People still want to pay their respects. People need to get on with their Monday morning. Absolutely. But there must be a sense of fear, unease, who are these guys? How safe are we? What, what is the sense you're I think getting? the French people are clearly defying fear and remaining defiant in the wake of, these, of this tragedy. Uh, you know that under the state of emergency, uh, major rallies are forbidden, but still people have been spontaneously taken to the streets of Paris, here, Place de la République, but not only in Paris, all across the country. People just want to show that they're not giving in to terrorism, that they're not afraid. Here, Place de la République, last night when you had a lot of people, thousands or hundreds at least, uh, people were um, uh, chanting, on n'a pas peur, on n'a pas peur, just, during the, just like after the Charlie Hebdo attacks, we're not afraid, we're not afraid. And I think the French people just have to show that they're not going to give in to uh, terrorism. They're not going to be afraid. And that's what we were trying to show. And that's why everyone's spontaneously taken to the streets at the locations that were attacked. Here, Place de la République, the most symbolic place uh, in Paris uh, with the statue mm. of Marianne, uh, symbol of the Republic. Yeah, right behind us. Um, even as you're talking to me, I'm just getting news in my uh, ear from, uh, from our editing team. A rocket launcher has been seized in Lyon. I mean, there are raids from Calais down to Toulouse across France. 150 is... searches, that's what uh, Manuel Valls just told uh, minutes ago. The French people in a radio address, 150 searches all across France, raids in the Bobigny suburb north of Paris, also in Toulouse, also in Grenoble, mm -hmm. not all uh, related to the, these latest attacks, but all related to yeah. potential terrorists. Yeah, and you know, you hear the emergency signals and it could just be normal Monday morning emergencies. But We've been there's... hearing that ever since Friday and it's been a nightmare. I'm born and bred in this neighborhood. This is where I live. And it's just the second time that the area has been targeted. And it's people like me who've been targeted. The Carillon, the Petit Cambodge are the two of my favorite venues, my locals, where I always used to go. My friend was doing his birthday party, Rubicha, next door. And thankfully, I did, decided not to go at the time, or not at that. I didn't get there on time. Yeah. My friend who was organizing his birthday called me and said, thank God no one arrived on time because I heard the gunshots, looked outside, saw dead corpses, but I was in the area. And uh, I had to hide in a restaurant because the guys were just, the gunmen were just around the corner and uh, we barricaded ourselves, people weeping, women weeping, men weeping, all on our mobile phones, calling our loved ones to say that we're safe. And it's just, and it was a bit of a nightmare. I couldn't go head home because the police had cordoned off the whole area. Thank God I ran into a colleague, a fellow journalist from France 24. We, we walked uh, north of Paris where presumably the gunmen weren't. And we, I slept at his house, and then the next day I was reporting uh, from the Elysee Palace for France 24. It's difficult because it's personal, it's professional, we have to mix everything, and it's all about trying not to be passionate about this, even though we've been targeted mm -hmm. by those terrorists. And trying not to be panicked by it as well. Clovis. I think we don't really have a choice, really. No, thank you so much, Clovis Kadzali, um, a reporter caught up in what happened on Friday.